Hello, so in this video I'm going to be comparing fractions with different denominators and trying to put them in order of size. I'm going to go through three sets of examples of fractions. The first set is where all the denominators are the same actually, but the numerators are different. I think that's probably a good place to start if you're not sure about what we're doing. Then I'm going to go on to looking at fractions where all the numerators are the same, but the denominators are different and then I'm going to look at fractions that have numerators and denominators that are different. Okay now if you click on the green bubble it will take you straight to that part of the video and if you already feel comfortable with that then you can click straight onto the yellow bubble and that will take you to that part of the video and if you're already okay with that then you can go straight onto the orange part of the video and at any one time you can click on the return to menu bit at the top and that will take you back to this page. Okay, if you get your notebooks and pencils ready, we will begin. Put these fractions in order of size from smallest to biggest. 4 sixths, 5 sixths and 3 sixths. Okay, that's probably very straightforward, but if it seems like a bit of a mystery, then let me try and use a diagram to help you understand what's happening. 4 sixths, 5 sixths and 3 sixths. Okay, here I have a bar, another bar and another bar. I'm going to cut them all up into sixths. First one done, second one done and third one done. Now I was asked to compare 3 sixths with 5 sixths with 4 sixths. There we go. You see how I've coloured them in? 3 out of 6, 5 out of 6 and 4 out of 6 we can see that the smallest one is 3 sixths, the largest one is 5 sixths, and the one in between is 4 sixths. So in which case, I need to put them in this order. 3 sixths, 3 sixths, 4 sixths, and 5 sixths done. Okay, next one. Put these fractions in order of size from smallest to biggest. Now, this is where all the numerators are the same, but the denominators are different. And you might be thinking from the previous example, well, I'll just choose the smaller number, and that will be my smallest, and the bigger number will be my biggest. But we really need to understand what's going on. I don't want to just say what the rule, the, if there's a rule or not. Let me help you try and understand by way of another diagram. So here, it, this represents one whole. This green bar represents one whole. If I start cutting it up into fractions, watch what happens. Here I've cut it into two. So the size of one half looks like that, half of the whole. Okay? Now if I cut it into three and I choose one third, then it looks like that. And if I cut the whole into quarters and then choose one of them, it looks like that. Can you see what's happening every time I increase the denominator, every time I cut it up into more pieces? If you can't, let me do it this way. So the bottom one is cut into five pieces. This one is cut into four pieces. The next one I'll cut into three pieces and choose one of them. And the top one I'm just going to cut into two pieces and choose one of them. Look what's happening. Every time the denominator gets bigger by one, the piece, one of those pieces, will get smaller. And that's got to make sense, right? The more pieces you cut a hole into, the smaller each piece is going to be. Okay. Well, in that case, that's going to help us with this. One fifth has been cut into five pieces, and we've got one of them selected. So it's going to be the smallest because it's been cut into more pieces than these two fractions. This one's going to be the middle fraction in order of size because it's only been cut into four pieces. And this one is going to be the biggest out of the three because it's only been cut into three pieces and therefore each individual piece, each individual third, will be bigger. If you're starting to see a pattern, the pattern also applies when you change the, the numerator, let's say from 1 to 2, but keep the numerator all the same across these different fractions. So 2 fifths is smaller than 2 quarters, which is smaller than 2 thirds. Quick demo of that. 
here I'll select two fifths, here I'll select two quarters, here I'll select two thirds, here I'll select two halves. As long as the numerators are the same, you can see that the bigger the denominator is, the smaller the fraction will be because you're cutting it into more and more pieces. It sounds unintuitive to start with, having a bigger number somewhere, meaning an actual smaller amount. But with fractions, remember, that, remember what's going on. Think of a little picture inside your mind. Okay, and we're on to the third and final set of fractions, which is to put these fractions, which have different numerators and different denominators, into order of size, starting with the smallest. Four sixths, three fifths, and seven tenths. If you're unsure of fractions, and this is your first time trying to put things in order, you may have come up with a rule by yourself that says, right, well, if the, there's a bigger number on top, then that probably means it's bigger, but if there's a smaller number on the bottom, then that means it's bigger, and trying to mishmash different rules together. That doesn't work. Rules do not help you understand what is going on, but pictures do. So we've got four sixths, three fifths, and seven tenths. What I really need to do is to put each of these fractions into an equivalent fraction which all share the same bottom number, which all share the same numerator. Because then it becomes an example like this where all the numerators are different but the denominators are the same. If I've got the same denominators it becomes really easy. So let's try and do that. Let's turn these into fractions that all have the same denominator. What do I need to do to achieve that? I need to look at the current denominators, 6, 5 and 10, and think of a common multiple. That is a number where the 6 times table meets the 5 times table and also meets the 10 times table. It doesn't take me long to figure out that the common denominator or a common denominator that they all share is 30. They also share 60 by the way, but 30 is smaller and that will mean that our multiplication won't be as big and will be prone to fewer errors. So we'll turn these all into something out of 30. There are other videos that you can watch to turn um, one fraction into another equivalent fraction and you can link to that by clicking on the bubble that's just turned up. But before I go ahead and show you how to do that, again I want to turn to a diagram. So I'm going to turn 4 sixths into something out of 30. Here I've got a bar that's cut into 30 pieces and here I've got a bar that's cut into 4. So we said 4 sixths. What is that the same as in 30ths? Well I hope you're counting with me. The answer is 20. 4 sixths is the same as 20 out of 30. Okay, how did we get that? 4 sixths. Well, to turn 6 into 30, one way to do that would be to multiply by 5. Okay, so to turn 6 into 30 using multiplication, I'd need to times by 5. And whatever you do to the bottom, you need to do to the top. That's one way of looking at it. The diagram is the other way. Okay. So we've got 3 fifths and we want to turn that into 30 ths. So here are fifths and I've got 3 of them. I don't need quite as many 30 ths for that. I need only 18. There are 18 30 ths there and that's the same as or equivalent to 3 fifths. How does that work? So what can I times 5 by to make 30? 6. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So times the top by 6, you get 18. And now we've got 7 tenths to play with. I'm going to turn that into 30 ths. So the bottom bar is now changed into tenths, and I need 7 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One, two. And that means I need 21 30 ths to match the 7 tenths. 21 30 ths is equivalent to 7 tenths. You could do it this way on your paper by figuring out what you need to multiply 10 by to make 30, which is 3, and you do the same to the top, times that by 3, and you get 21. And now look, I've got three fractions, all out of 30. 
and it makes it very easy to compare the fractions because you just look at the numerators. There we go. So which one's the smallest? It's this one because it's equivalent to 18 thirtieths. Three fifths is the smallest. And which one's the next smallest? This one, four sixths. Oh, hello, disappeared. There you go. And the biggest is seven tenths. I've lost it. Seven tenths is the biggest. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Go back to the menu if you want, watch the parts that you need to revisit. But please remember, think of diagrams, not just rules. You really need to understand what's going on behind all this and not just try and remember a series of, oh, well, if the top number's bigger or the bottom number's bigger, then you have that kind of fraction. It just, it's not a helpful way to learn things. Draw a picture if you need to, and then the rules will start to make sense. This has got to make sense to you before you can be successful at this. Okay, that's the end. Bye-bye.